I would take a welcome any um, questions from anyone. Mm -hmm. Do I have one? I do, and it's it's somebody wanted me to do a remake of it, but I th I'm I'm uh, I'm hesitant. I'm uh, I don't know. It's uh, I'll see. But yes, I do have more scars. Believe it or not, it's, it's astonishing to think of the early work that uh, particularly we looked at today from the 70s is uh, seemed uh, he characterized as being distilled and really focused on particular things and uh, later works which, which he knew about uh, were for lack of a better word elaborate and he wanted to know where that uh, 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 where that push came from basically or where that momentum came from and partly I think from um, restlessness uh, wanting to move on and also the times and uh, beginning to collaborate with a partner in, in 1983 and we have made all of our work together since then and I had already begun to do narrative work before that though uh, I did um, what's it called um, some call it bad luck and the Gloria tapes are both uh, quite long form uh, narrative works that were scripted and the scientist series and some other works in between so I'd already begun to move into narrative which is a kind of a uh, a move away from from the conceptual art uh, practice, uh, and you know, I think that there was a period of time where the concept, where conceptual art ha was uh, had been evacuated. It, it was it was finished. You know, the uh, the the ability for it to really hold an audience or to engage an audience um, seemed like tricks. Um, so it was there was an uh, that's I don't know anybody could. Someone else could contradict me there. I don't know. Paul or Kim could contradict me. I don't know if it was, it, but, but it, I remember it as being that that you really wanted to do something different, a little bit different. Um, did we fold it in or leave it behind? I believe that the most recent. What happened? Yeah. Well. Oh. Oh. Right. Yeah. I believe the most recent works that we've been doing. Uh, both sculptural and installation based and certainly this work and that's why I wanted to end with it have really brought come back to a kind of um, uh, revisiting of some of those tenants that's why I was brought up all you know the uh, art is idea um, not you know the, the sort of a move away back backing off from narrative um, and doing something else for for a little while and it, it it's, it's interesting to re-engage with some of these ideas that we were working with earlier, to re-engage with them in a uh, maybe a technically more sophisticated way, to have different tools to do it, but also to be living in, in different times. So, uh, so the question is about um, the, um, the looking at the Joseph Kasuth one and three chairs and, and speaking of it as, a, as a now that the, that the documentation of it is really just remembering it. Because we don't, we're not, you know, we're not seeing it, and wondering if um, where. I mean, I, I think that is what documentation does do, uh, for performance works in particular, or, in this case, for, um, for these conceptual pieces that, uh, you know, where. The, the wall drawings, the Lawrence Wiener's wall drawings, and and these kinds of things, which don't, which only exist as instructions. Um, there, they, we we can read about them and and you know intellectually understand them, but it's another thing to actually see them done. So I don't think it replaces. I don't think the documentation of the performance replaces the performance. Um, in your case, I know you do performance, uh, but it it becomes a way of uh, of. It does become a, a mnemonic trigger in, uh, in some way to revisit whatever those uh, feelings were that one had when one's, if one saw the performance. Otherwise, it's that they're, they are um, somewhat um, hollow. They can be, for sure. Well, I'll yeah. tell you the story of how that happened. The, uh, um, the Images Festival put, um, developed a project, I think, two years ago or three years ago. Uh, and it was called the IFPOD. And uh, it was when iPods first got a little screen that you could see things on. And they, they commissioned, I think, six young artists and they got six oldsters like myself. Uh, they, to, and they selected works that would work on this tiny screen. And uh, so they, uh, and it was part, and during the Images Festival, you could 
dial up or wireless. I can't remember exactly how it happened, but it worked anyway. And um, they, um, and then at the conclusion of this, there was, I believe, who believes in free distribution, which coming from VTape, that's not exactly what I believe in, um, put all, just loaded all of them up onto the YouTube. So that's how it got onto YouTube. Um, and I thought, well, it's an interesting project. I'm not going to do it. No, nothing's going to, I'm not going to take it down. Um, there are some other things on YouTube that I should take down. There are excerpts of other tapes and stuff that I don't know where they got them. But, um, but this one, I, I thought that was kind of interesting. It, it was a project, as it were. Um, and they all went on together. Uh, but they are individual titles. But I, I do think the instructional nature of, of the, you know, the digital age is, that's a very interesting correlation. It's not something that I had thought about before. But I certainly, when you see this work, and, and as you say, Susie Lake's work and all kind, you know, and Theodore you know, Conchi's work, you know, I mean, it, it's, it, there's a, a lot of, um, there are a lot of things that are showing you how to do things, how to, you know, hold somebody's eyes open in pryings and, you know, how to ha do all kinds of, uh, and, uh, oh, there's one, the, one of the A-Space tapes of Vito Conchi, I don't know if you have it in the show, is he's got a cat in a cardboard box and he's holding the cat in the box, and cats, you know how cats are, they can get his head up and its paw up and everything, and uh, he doesn't, he can't, he, it, but he's keeping it in the box. And um, so the, the, this whole amazing set of dem demonstrative works, just because the camera could record them, I guess, and I guess people are still doing the same thing, although they're slightly, they're less conceptual and more practical now. Like you can learn how to load a Hasselblad with film, uh, which is something that we have uh, done repeatedly since we can never remember how to do it. The question was about the connection with um, um, uh, art coming, to being less in the museum and, and more in, um, uh, in everyday life, in fact. So. For m most of us practicing today, I think we would refer it back to Duchamp. And that um, that what the artist says is art is the art. It's not uh, so. It's not about being in us or not in us or whatever. <laughs> Although certainly f the Fluxus group um, in the the nineteen sixties uh, were were very instrumental at uh, 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 at trying to um, to put forward the idea like a, a Fourier. I think his name was Robert Fourier, the uh, the, the French um, sort of social. Um, philosopher uh, who talked about art in the everyday also, but that, uh, that everyone was an artist. And Robert Filiou uh, was very big on this concept. Uh, he was one of the Fluxus group. So it's, I mean, these are the, throughout the latter part of the, of, of the 20th century, I think these, these ideas have come forward. Uh, preceding most people, I think, see the genealogy proceeding fairly directly from Duchamp and his ideas. To be a true conceptual artist, I probably thought too much about the aesthetic. Uh, you know, I really was, uh, and because I did come from photography, I was very, I very carefully framed things um, and very carefully lit things. It's, you see these old tapes now projected like this and they, you know, they look like hell, you know, they look terrible because they're, they're not, they were never meant to be that large. So you're getting a kind of a facsimile of what that, that might look like. Um, we have had some good luck of restoring them, and I think that, um, and if they're played on uh, monitor-sized playback, there you get an, an idea, but there's still a softness to it. Uh, but uh, certainly, the, all of my early work was shot in natural light, the black and white work, uh, which lent it, and I had a very, very good camera, and so it lent a very particular kind of glowing quality to it, and, and particularly some of the work, uh, uh, some of the shots in a tape called Facing South from 1975 or 6, 5, I think, um, were really very, very, um, very beautiful and very beautifully framed and very, um, a lot of, a lot going on in them. So the, the extremely early stuff like juggling, know your turtle, those are so early that the, that the cameras weren't very good. But by the time I had my own camera, I was certainly uh, producing, um, you know, aestheticizing my, um, um, you know, my, my imagery and as much as, as, as one could. Uh, with that, so it's an interesting question, though, because I don't think it, you, I don't think we're supposed to 
you know, for doing conceptual art, but it's so hard not to. So, uh, you know, you kind of get, you know, it looks nice, the viewfinder. So, anyway, thank you very much for this opportunity.